Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to introduce you to the sudo command. Basically, this is a way that you can escalate your privileges within the Ubuntu server so that you can do things such as edit files or do modifications to the system. So now with a lot of uh, distributions of Linux, whenever you create your initial account, that is going to be what is called the root user. So think of this as the administrator in the Windows world. Basically, in a lot of distributions, the first account that's created is the root user and the root user basically can do whatever the hell they want uh, to the operating system. They can create files and folders, they can modify uh, I and I files, they can go through and they have the power to do whatever they want because they are the administrator, they are the root. Uh, there's a problem with this from a security standpoint though because if you do something like that, that basically means that one account has the ability to do whatever the hell it wants on the system. So if somebody can compromise that single account either through scripts or some other way, you can run into a lot of issues. Uh, so that's why in the Windows world, they came up with UAC, uh, and in the Linux world for Ubuntu, they came up with sudo. So basically what happens with sudo is that you create your initial account. So when you install the, the Linux operating system, the Ubuntu operating system, the server version, you create your account, and that's going to be your administrator account. Well, the interesting thing is you don't have permission to do whatever the hell you want in, in, to the entire operating system. What you have to do is if you're going to make certain modifications, you have to escalate your privileges uh, to give yourself the ability to actually make uh, certain modifications. And so this is where you use the sudo command. So what's nice about this, uh, especially think about um, in like a data center environment or a server room environment, think about uh, what happens if you accidentally forget to log out of a server, right? So think about it. You've got your server room. You're not really worried about security and so you log into the server uh, you know you walk away you don't think about it you don't log out of the server and then at that point somebody could literally just walk in and start running commands uh, willy-nilly off of the user account that you logged in with well the nice part with sudo is what happens is if you want to do uh, specific things like things that will really modify the operating operating system you have to use a sudo command and then whatever it is that you want to do, like make a directory or remove directory, something like that. And then what will happen is it will prompt you for a password, basically for your password to verify that you actually want to escalate your privileges in order to do whatever it is that you're trying to do. And so this is just a little security procedure. Basically, it keeps it keeps the system from being, uh, you know, basically hacked just simply because somebody forgot to log out uh, and they have root privileges. Now, the nice thing uh, now now, in the modern world, at least with 18.04, is apparently sudo has a 15 minute uh, timeout. Uh, so this wasn't always the case. Uh, timeout used to be, basically if you wanted to use sudo in the past, uh, back when I first learned Ubuntu, uh, every time that you want to do a, do a command that required a sudo, uh, you would have to type in the password every single time. Which, <laughs> kind of like UAC in the Windows world, if you force people to do something every single time, they're, they're going to come up with ways to get around that. And so there are ways uh, that you can simply uh, basically get rid of the sudo functionality. And that's essentially what people did. So that's the thing. Again, and this is one of the things you have to think about the security world and the real world is that you create, you create this system in order to make uh, things more secure. But then the people actually using the system get so frustrated with the system that you've created that they, they create back doors to what you did, and then it just turns into a mess. So one of the th nice things now is apparently the timeout is 15 minutes. So basically, again, if you're gonna make directory, remove directory, anything that would require the sudo command, uh, you plug in the sudo password, and then you're able to run commands uh, without having to put in a password after that uh, for 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, it, it'll time out and you'll have to put in the password again. There is a way uh, basically to turn off the sudo or to change the timeout, but I'm not going to go into that today. I think that's a little bit more advanced. Now, when I think of sudo, one thing to think about, this might be a little bit of an Eliism. This shows my age. And again, one of the issues that you're gonna run into in the Linux world, <laughs> People have done this for a while. 
is words change. Words change, meanings change, the meanings of commands change. So when I think of sudo, and whenever I talk about it going into the future, I think of it as super user do. So super user is basically that root account. Super user is the same as root account, essentially. So that's, that's how I think about it, right? I think about it, I'm at my permission level, and then I need to do something that I don't have the authority to do. So I say super user sudo, super user do, and then whatever it is I want, and basically that's how I think about an escalating privileges. Uh, apparently now though, to be clear, I think they're now call it substitute user do, because you know, in the Linux world, he's not really super user, you're really substituting users. So if you say he's super user, it's wrong, it's really substitute, anyways. So again, just one of those things to think about with words and Eliisms, and I've been doing this so long that <laughs> words have changed, and so it gets really frustrating. Like for me, I I think super user do makes a lot of sense. I think super user do sudo yes, okay, I got it. Uh, but now I think it's substitute. They're theoretically it's supposed to be substitute user do. So yeah, go look at the Wikipedia articles. Look at look at the other information on that. And that's again, that's just one of those word frustrations that we get into as things change with the Linux world. And one of the problems that you'll run into if you're trying to learn some of this stuff is where even again, even things that you think of as abbreviations seem to change over the years and it gets to cause a bit of a mess. But anyways, let's go over to the computer. Uh, I'll demonstrate uh, sudo. Uh, we're just going over the basics of this today. Again, with anything that I show you when it comes to Linux is there's a thousand more configurations. <laughs> There's 500 different ways uh, to skin a cat with any of these commands uh, that I'm showing you. So if I'm showing you something and you find it interesting and you think that you want to learn more about it, please do, do go to Google, do some more searching on it because there's a lot more to everything that I'm showing you uh, than I'm going to get to. And the reason is, is just because there, there's so much to it and at a certain point you get into the weeds so I'm just showing you the basic stuff so there's some interesting stuff with sudo if you wanted to do some continuing research I may talk about it more in like advanced classes once we get at the introduction series uh, but we're just keeping this at at the basic level today uh, if you want to learn more about it go do some research so anyways let's with that let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how sudo works so here we are back at my computer. Again, I have a virtual machine installed within VirtualBox and I'm currently using Ubuntu 18.04.3. This is a vanilla installation. Uh, now to be clear, what I'm saying today, what I'm teaching today should be relevant uh, for, for the next 10 years. Uh, realistically, the, the only major thing that's changed, at least for the basic concept of sudo in the past 10 years is that whole timeout thing. Um, so just realize if you're using Ubuntu you know, 25, it should be the same. It should more or less basically be the same, at least with the with the the, the, the basic stuff here. So, anyways, let's uh, let's log in. So we're gonna go to Bob, and our password is one two three four five six because I just roll the easy way. And now we are logged in. We see the basic information. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the screen. So I clear the screen. Um, I'm now in my my home folder. So password. So I'm in home Bob. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change directory and I am going to go to root so I'm now in the system root um, and so let's say I'm in the system root and so I do lsl and so I take a look at the files and folders in the system root and I'm here and I'm thinking hmm you want to know what I really want to do what I really want to do is I want to create a test folder what you know I'm gonna create a share or do something like that I'm going to create a test folder so what I'm gonna do is uh, first, I'm going to try to do make directory mkdir and then just a folder called test. Make directory test and I hit enter. Now, what you can see here is make directory cannot create directory test permission denied. Even though, again, there are literally no other user accounts on the system. There is only Bob. Bob is the account that was created for the system, but I'm not able to create a directory. So, what I can do is sudo super user do as i say make directory oops test now it asks me for my password one two three four five six and if we do ls l we can now go and see that right here we have the test directory so basically if i'm up at the system root uh in order to make it a test directory i would have to use a sudo command right and so with the same idea uh let's see 
same idea. Let's say I wanted to get rid of the directory. So RM, so remove directory, test. So I was like, okay, I did my test, whatever else. If I hit enter, again, as we see before, permission denied. So what we're gonna do is sudo rmdir test. And now again, since we're within that timeout period, uh, it is still accepting that password that we gave for the sudo command before. We were able to remove the directory test, we do lsl, and if we go, we can take a look, and we can see there is no test here. Now I wanna show you, now I wanna show you how sudo Basically, I want to show you how Linux fails in the most horrible way possible, the most spaghetti monster way possible. Uh, so there's something called the sudoers uh, file. Um, so I'm not going to go into this today. So there's something called the sudoers file. And basically what that file allows you to do is change the configurations for the sudo command, who's able to use it, the whole nine yards. Um, and that is sitting up here in the ETC folder, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go CD etc so this will change us to the etc folder once we're in the etc folder i'll clear to make this easier and then i'm going to do lsl and so we can take take a look and basically what i'm looking for here is this sudoers so this is a file this is a sudoers file uh, now there is a uh, text editor there's an editor within ubuntu it's one of the default editors in ubuntu now called uh, ubuntu now called uh, vim I like Vim, just one of those things, I use it. So let's say I'm sitting here and somebody told me, hey, you know, the way that you change configurations for the uh, the, the sudo command is by going to the sudoers uh, file. And so I think, oh, okay, I wanna go and take a look at the sudoers file to see what configurations are in the sudoers file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do Vim, oops, I'm gonna do uh, Vim, V-I-M, right? And then I'm simply going to plug in sudoers. And it's like, okay, so Vim, so, so file editor, open up sudoers, I wanna see what's there. I hit enter, and then this is the way, this is like the, ah, 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 why, why are you so, so bad, so very bad at user experience? Again, this is the kind of thing that makes people lose their minds. So what we can see here, obviously, is it says sudoers, permission denied. Okay, well, that, that unto itself isn't the most horrible thing in the world. That's, that's like, okay, well, my permission is denied. That's not really the problem. That's not really the problem. The problem is, is what the hell am I looking at? I've just got a page and one side, it squiggles. What, what, I don't understand. And look, hear that? I'm, I'm trying to tippy tap type. So I try to type and I can't do anything. I press Q and I can't do anything. Like, ah! So here's the issue. So basically, you're you're in Vim, but what was unable to open up this uh, this this file. So what you have to do for Vim, for Vim, is you do colon. Oops. You do you do colon, and that give, that brings you basically to commands. So this is the commands. Uh, so the commands you can quit. You can quit without saving. You can quit with saving. Hold on, yards. But what we're gonna do is Q. So basically, you do colon colon Q, and then you hit enter, and now you're able to get back to your command prompt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, it's not, it's not that Linux coders are bad at user experience, it's just they literally don't, they just don't even think about it. So what you wanna do is sudo vim sudoers, and if you do that, hit enter. Now look at that. Then you actually get a file. So this is something called Vim. We'll talk about Vim later. We'll talk about file editors later. But I can sit through. I can be in here and I can scroll through and I can look at the other the, the different information and I can get an idea of what's going on. But again, like that, this is where I really want you to understand with Linux. <laughs> we think that, that's why people give up. That's why people give up because they don't they don't realize sudo. They think, oh, I'm just gonna go look at this file, and then they get whatever the hell that you just saw, and then they don't even know how to get out. They just saw. <laughs> yeah, things get bad. Uh, so just realize when you're dealing with um, with Vim, uh, basically what you do in order to actually send commands again to save to quit whole nine yards, uh, you do uh, colon. So you do colon and then you do Q, and then you hit enter, and you're out.
Uh, so these are some things uh, just to be thinking about with the, the sudo command, especially when you're going to do modifications and edits and those types of things. Uh, and again, it's, 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 relatively, it's relatively simple. Really, the biggest problem that I see with it is understanding what happens when things fail because then you just get like things like squiggly marks and it can be really really frustrating. So that, that's really all there is for a basic introduction to sudo. So that's an introduction to the sudo command. Basically all you're doing is you're escalating your privileges in order to be able to do certain tasks, be able to edit certain files, uh, the whole nine yards. Overall, it's a pretty simple concept. <laughs> The problem comes in things like the failures, where you're like, what? Now, again, to be clear, this command can be customized like darn near everything else in Linux as I go forward, at least for the introduction series, probably for the rest of it too. I'm just going to leave a pl the plain vanilla implement implementation of sudo because I think it's good for most, especially new technicians, uh, to get your mind around this and not to get into too many bad habits. Now, to be clear, like I say, in the, in the real world, if you're sitting there pounding away at Linux servers for eight hours a day, there may be a reason to, to modify the timeout one way or the other or basically more or less get rid of the sudo command. Again, when you're in charge of Linux servers and you know you take the responsibility when things crash or ransomware hits or whatever else, as I would say, you do you. Um, as I'm going to teach you stuff, in th the stuff in the beginning, I think it's better to get used to kind of like the default security settings for these things. Because overall, overall, I think it would be better if people basically left most of these settings as they are. So that's really all there is to the sudo command uh, for, from a basic level. Again, to be clear, you can give different users uh, different sudo abilities. There's a lot of interesting things you can go if you get more advanced into the sudo. Uh, command, but if you're just learning how to use Linux, more basically, more or less, if you have a box, you are the only user account, or you really only have like a couple of user accounts on there, um, just keeping everything simple. Uh, to to just that, that main user, I think will work best for everybody. Uh, but do realize uh, if you type in a command and you get a weird error again like say you, you you go to open a configuration file or you go to do something and it errors out weird it, the taste of the error seems bizarre uh one thing that i would recommend is try to back out of whatever the hell you're doing um and then and then use a sudo command to go in and try, retry and that might actually fix things for you the other big lesson the other big lesson that you should be learning in the linux world <laughs> is try, try to learn all the possible ways to escape out of a process or out of an application, right? Control C, Q, Control Q, uh, colon Q. Again, <laughs> with all these different things in the Linux world, they didn't just go with one way of how to, how to exit out of a process or exit out of an application. There's a whole bunch of different ways. And so that, that's a big issue that people run into, I mean, like a real significant issue that people run into is, again, they open an application, they do something, and they're like, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna close this and I'm gonna go back to what I was doing. <laughs> again, like permission denied. You go, okay, permission denied. That's not the permission denied is not the problem. The problem is you're looking at the page of squiggly marks and you're like, how do I get out of this? Uh, so that is an important thing. If you, if you write one thing in your notebook, if you have a notebook and you only have one page of notes, have that page of notes be all of the escapes of how to get out of things uh, because that really can cause people a lot of problems. You, you don't want to have, you do not want to have to be the noob that is literally rebooting their server because they don't know how to get out of them. <laughs> Right there's 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 a lot of things there's a lot of mistakes that you can make that you know yeah give it time and, and people will forgive you for if you have to re reboot a server because you don't know how to get out of Vim yeah people are gonna laugh at you forever so just something to keep in mind so anyways as always I enjoyed doing this video I look forward to seeing you on the next one.